One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the I don't know, I'll, I'll just talk, I guess. Basically how I kind of structured it was I picked like 11 charts. Like there was maybe like 30 or 40 submitted or maybe it was even less. And I just like kind of picked the best ones, but like it was more so I tried to do like a variety of like longs, shorts, and then um, basically just like longs and shorts and like some different types of setups. So that's how I kind of structured it. And um, yeah, let's just get right into it, I guess. Um, so yeah. this one was um kind of a first bounce at the start of zombie hour and the reason why i kind of wanted to talk about this one was just because of the like just the way this trade was kind of done where we had kind of like like in this particular setup we kind of had this like morning this morning pop and then it kind of turned into like a bit of backside but it just didn't really go lower and then all of a sudden we got another pop, squeezed everyone out, and then we just kind of got these two candles and this this member tried for first bounce. And the reason why I kind of wanted to show this one was because first bounce is like a really good setup. If like we get super, super overextended and you know shorts didn't have enough time to cover and they're going to be covering on that dip and then you kind of buy that dip and get that kind of quick pop. But in this scenario... I really think that after this got over high a day, all these emotional shorts ended up covering and there was no one left but longs. And that's why it didn't really pop as much. Um, and also usually in the first bounce, it's like made up of like three emotional big long green candles. And then we kind of get this dip where shorts cover and then we keep popping. So I just wanted to say that like, if you think that shorts have already kind of like stopped out over high day or there's been like a lot of emotion or maybe... Usually what happens is it just keeps grinding and then we stop everyone out and then we don't really get a bounce after that tank candle. So in this kind of situation, that's kind of what happened. That's why I, I don't think we bounced just because we didn't really have trap shorts. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on this one or not. Harry, I'll say something from a shorts perspective. So the thing that I would never do is a long and trust me, man, I'm, I, you know, I'm big caps are very different from small caps, but Dude, I got a certain rule back when I did do longs on small caps many years ago is I will never long a stock that's up from six to 14 on bounces. It's just too high, man. It's too high. The percentage is so yeah, overinflated. The more it goes higher, guys, yes, you want strong stocks, but holy shit, dude. I mean, there gets to a point where this thing actually is too overextended. It has to come down. Like, yeah. not like you should just short blindly, but it, I mean, I don't know what you guys say because you're more longs, but man, I, I like the first dip when you're at, you know, 11 and 10 because it's you know we've seen moves from seven to ten a lot but whoa seven to fourteen i mean you're in real dangerous dump territory yeah 100 percent. that's what i was kind of thinking too like if there are any shorts left holding from 14 they probably covered into that emotional pop and, and all like, the shorts probably just got squeezed on that push like you said harry that's that's smart yes yeah 100 percent. and i also think like if you want along this like we did have that kind of tank handle which would make me super super cautious as a long but since it took like almost like an hour to not go lower after that tank handle, maybe then you want to take like a long on a, on a pullback just because you're like, okay, it's not going lower. I can risk the prior low and maybe hope that we keep going higher and squeeze some shorts out. But once they're squeezed out, we only have our like natural sellers, as Bao says, and we have no shorts like bidding it up. And then we just get that tank. Austin, I don't know if you want to say anything. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the thing, guys. I like th there's a big distinct distinction for me when it comes to the first bounce, where I want a big move, but I don't want a parabolic move. First bounces off parabolics are shit because it. it no. Yeah, because the the shorts that you kind of want to cover, like on the dip that you're gonna be buying to help your first bounce work. Yeah. If it's a parabolic move, if they all got out, you know, like that's why you kind of want a big kind of medium, healthy, sustained move for that, for that first bounce, you get a parabolic like that. And a lot of the demand that you were hoping to buy the dip with you to help your trade is already out. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. And can you see me writing on the screen or not? Yeah, we can see you. 
that that white pen, can you see it really? Uh, Oliver's here. We can only see you. Uh, you can see the pen, right? No. That I'm writing over this. Okay. No, the only thing that I have in, in terms of this is this is like for, for shorts, it's like when this is pre market, right? Yeah. No, no, no. No. Like, uh, no. Ah, okay. This is day. So. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. The, the only thing I have to say is when you see a... a a stock gravitating on top of BWAP, um, it's not moving lower. This happened in the in the last weekend mentoring that we have that it caught a lot of shorts of guard. Your tell is that it does it's not touching BWAP. So the the fact that it's not touching BWAP, it's telling you that it still has some move left. But I agree with Tosh a hundred percent. Something that moved from eight dollar to thirteen dollar, it's 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 too much, you know. Yeah, but you missed the move, right? Like, exactly. Claudio, you, you kind of missed. I mean, let me say it like this, guys, because Claudio, man, he's on it, dude. He's on it right here. So think about it like this. You know, in anything in trading, man, break it down to a very, very, very reasonable and exact, like, understanding of something. This is why I give analogies like short sellers where, you know, lions in the jungle, et cetera, et cetera. Think about it like this. I never want to join trend, bro. When the trend is completely exacerbated, yeah. I want to play counter trend. So you want to play trend on that first dip, but bro, six to fourteen dollars. You think I still want to ride that trend? That trend is going to reverse at some point. I'll say it for short. I do not like a short that is 100% broken down. It's too broken down. The only way it could do is a reverse, or at least if it keeps going back down with the exacerbated move to the downside, I'm in huge risk. Does yeah. that make sense? So yes. the higher it goes, bro, your chances of success and a trend reversal, I mean, there's a very fine line, man. Yeah, 100%. The far, yeah, and the farther that stock gets away from VWAP, the more it's like more unsafe to long, in my opinion. For sure. Just like, you know, if you're shorting, the lower it is from VWAP, the more room you kind of have to bounce back. I've always pictured VWAP as more of like an equilibrium where it's like kind of like the middle. But yeah, once we get super, super far out from that it's like no you just can't be longing up there <laughs> seriously jesus all right next one um this is another long there were a lot of longs actually submitted um that's good but this one um so he went long here and then uh sold the pop and then went long again and ended up selling up here i really do like this long but i wanted to include this one because i don't really it ended up working out but i don't really love the timing of it where we just got this tank candle and then he ended up going in long. And to me, that's like almost like a little bit of FOMO where like you missed the move from like this kind of 320 to 440. All of a sudden we get that tank candle, you go in, that's a little bit too emotional for me. What I would have liked to see is that this thing still holds up after this tank candle, give it 15 minutes, give it 20 minutes, see if it can still hold up after that tank candle and then maybe get it on a pullback for higher because you know, your thesis would be in this scenario. A lot of people are short under VWAP because they saw the tank handle. They think it can go lower, but it's not going lower. So then we're going to squeeze them out and then finally go lower. That's the only kind of acceptable thesis that I see on it. So for me, I'd want the market to kind of show me, okay, we can't go lower. We can't go lower. We can't go lower. Instead of just going in right away after that candle, except like expecting a bounce. Um, but really nice sells up here, just recognizing that, okay, um, this volume candle is like one of the highest on the day. Probably a lot of shorts ended up covering out on that um, and just just kind of selling. And he ended up kind of top taking this and then it ended up going lower. So yeah, I like it. I would have waited maybe 15 minutes after that kind of, uh, after that kind of situation, but um, it is what it is. He ended up getting a nice trade out of it. And uh, yeah. I actually took this trade, I think. Uh, and, and I think the key thing, uh, a key thing with this trade, um, this is, this was running with pets. So you kind of have to trade this as, you know, this was like the sympathy to pets, P-E-T-Z at the, at the yeah. time. So, I mean, you know, like 
like when when it made this oh you, obviously you guys can't see my mouse but when it made that first move up to view up it was kind of following pets and then i think like pets kind of halted down like halted up and then like didn't continue and that's what caused that that initial tank and so where you were entering was kind of like on a normal kind of chart maybe okay but you want to be careful like when the the leader tanks that you know that the tank on the sympathy doesn't necessarily mean it's a good entry so like at the, you know long story short you know kind of wait for that con to consolidate a little bit when it pulls so harshly like that off of that first VWAP tank. Well, and let me, let me say something from a shorts perspective, right? So guys, whatever the market leader is, whatever's going on that day, let's even keep it even simpler than that. Look at just this chart. What do you notice about the volume? You know how I'm a death candle player, right? So I'm like, dude, I get in after death candles, which you think there is a death candle on that big red candle through VWAP. But what do you see with the volume? It's like a fucking tsunami, dude. I'm not going to chase short there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. When the volume bars are bigger than the immediate open bars, yeah. which that's the immediate open, right? I hate TZ charts because I can never read them. Yeah, 930. Yeah, me too. Me too. God, I hate, guys, start posting TD Ameritrade charts. Or I like this fucking TZ kills me, man. But check this out. Look, dude, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Whose screen is this? Harry, yours? Yeah. Bro, just draw a line, like just click your mouse right where the morning volume is and then look at it go up, yeah. dude. This is like a hurricane of volume. I am yeah. not going to short this. Yeah. Not he, a long chance. Was he was long. He was long. Yeah. All good, brother. I'm going golfing. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you, everyone, for coming. <laughs> see you, dude. I'll see you guys. Bye. Thank yeah. you, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.